CONOPS, Concept of Operations, specifically for CCTV surveillance, sensor deployment, and design in 3D using SketchUp. Create winning proposals, precision test the designs, and maintain satisfied customers. Concepts of Operation, CONOPS. Well, what are CONOPS? Systems are deployed to accomplish certain goals and objectives as defined by the customer. This is the mission. CONOPS are the way in which an asset or technology is deployed and used to yield a specific outcome in support of the mission. Analysis and review of asset performance characteristics versus CONOPS goes to establish the framework of the design. Does the asset in the way in which it is deployed contribute to the accomplishment of the mission? This is the question we ask ourselves. Ultimately, we want to ensure that the mission goals are achieved. In the context of this presentation, CCTV surveillance sensor deployment, well, what is CCTV? Uh, CCTV? Closed circuit television cameras, thermal imagers, SWIR, NIR technology used to maintain surveillance of an area by outputting video images. I'm not going to speak to the trans transport methods such as IP or legacy coax to get the images out at this point. Uh, these are optical sensors though and they have various performance characteristics such as field of view, sensor pixel density, and illumination requirements. 3D modeling. Well, what is 3D modeling? Well, we, we are all familiar with that. 3D modeling has been effectively employed by architects, mechanical, and other design engineers for quite some time and is the de facto standard tool employed during the design process. We've all seen the little uh, presentations in Solid Model Works uh, as a software or 3D uh, CAD uh, to present uh, different design images so that you can see what the part or thing might look like before it is actually built. Using simple tools such as SketchUp, we can create a virtual environment that accurately depicts the deployment location. And we can also create graphical representation of sensor characteristics such as fields of view. SketchUp, as I've mentioned, uh, that we're going to be using, it's a program that was a graphical program that was written by uh, uh, or developed by Google some time ago. And about a year, year and a half ago, or so it was purchased by Trimble. It's online on the web. It's free for download. As a first example of CONOPS, uh, we're going to look at the uh, surveillance of an airport, the Customs Green Channel. That's the area in the airport where you go when uh, uh, you have nothing to declare. What do we want to put in there from our, uh, for analytics? Well, maybe facial recognition and watch list alert, item left behind, direction of travel violation because people should be flowing in one direction and not the other. Uh, maybe passenger count. These are all things that we'll analyze, we'll find out from our CONOPS uh, analysis of what the customer wants. Other considerations we may have uh, might be just passenger throughput as far as uh, we don't want to impede the, the, the amount of passengers. There's a minimum amount the passengers need to go through this area. And maybe we want to exclude the customs officers uh, from any analysis or any recording. But let's take a look and let's focus just on facial recognition. Just take one piece. Of facial recognition does require uh, some specific uh, sensor deployment requirements. First, minimal pixels as defined by uh, one of the leading uh, vendors of facial recognition software is that you need 32 pixels on target interocular that's between the eyes which is an average about 6.5 centimeters. All this works out to a value of approximately 500 pixels per meter is what's required um, as, as a value for the uh, resolution of the, of the imager. So an example, at 10 meters from the target, the lens we selected produces a horizontal field of view, the width, of about 8 meters. Okay? Uh, the sensor or the imager, if, we, if it has a 4-3 format in the camera, would need to be, well, 8 meters times 500 pixels per meter would be 4,000 pixels in the horizontal, which would put us in the class of a 12 megapixel camera. Pose, which is the uh, deviation from straight on frontal, uh, this equates to the angle uh, of view from where the camera is uh, viewing the subject, uh, and equivalently the mounting height, therefore, of the subject cannot exceed plus or minus 15 degrees, uh, or the person cannot be rotated plus or minus, should not be rotated more than plus or minus 15 degrees from, from straight on. The site model we're going to look at, uh, basically we decided after we looked at it, and we'll see it in a moment here, uh, it's going to be a 20 meter standoff from the entrance of the hall. 
and the basic uh, entry channel will be about 5 meters wide. Okay, and now here we have the uh, view of the entry channel. It's not any one specific uh, customs green channel. It's just sort of representative of all the different ones I've been through in my travels internationally. Uh, you always see the sign, uh, customs nothing to declare, and there's a green sign, so it's called the green channel. Uh, this is all created in SketchUp. You see I can select the wall over here, move it out of the way. It's just a component that I, I made in SketchUp. Uh, very easy to make. Now like for the example of doors, uh, those are just components that were available in SketchUp that is actually available for download. Um, you can modify them a little bit and then just drop them back in place. Stanchions, again, just a component that's available in, in SketchUp. You type in the words stanchion and other people have made uh, models of stanchions and even the people, the bags, uh, all the items that you see here for the most part um, uh, were, were already pre-made by other other people uh, out there, just other people working in SketchUp doing various modeling uh, type functions. Mention the people, and those, those were all authored by other folks, and I just downloaded the, the models. But one thing I did uh, add in here is I did put some uh, uh, scaling to them so I can show that for example the little boy over there is about 1.3 meters uh, the young lady there is 1.69 meters uh, and the young man there is about 1.93 meters that represents the range of typically when you say uh, I want to see uh, have different subjects at different heights uh, be, to be seen by a system that typically represents the low range to the high range uh, the you know the 1.93 which is about six foot three US uh, that's the, up to the 95th percentile as far as height is concerned okay but it gives you the range there and that's one thing you can do is ver validate uh, uh, if you're going to achieve the heights that you need to achieve in a, in a specific model okay now let's take a look at the basic dimensions we spoke of and I'll use the measuring tape function here in SketchUp and you see where the uh, the mount would be for the camera to the entrance to the channel. It's about 19.94 meters. I said about 20 meters uh, from the uh, where the sensor will be to, to that entrance. And then use the measuring tape again to go from that stanchion pole to the other stanchion pole. It's about 4.3, 4.4 meters and I, I rounded it up to 5 meters just for, for our discussion's sake here. We're going to talk about camera lens selection and what I've decided on is a one-third uh, imager, one-third format imager, a four-three format and there's so many different calculators out there available but what you find if you plug the numbers in uh, that to get a 4.8 wide, remember I need that with a uh, horizontal field of view, 3.6 high vertical field of view, about 18 millimeters focal length so you use a 15 to 50 varifocal megapixel lens at 20 meters and there are specific megapixel lenses but that's a different discussion given the requirement for 500 uh, pixels per meter that we had before uh, plug all those numbers in in the calculations you find out that a camera in the range of at least 5 megapixels would be required down below I have a little diagram of it here we have the uh, uh, image that I created in SketchUp of a 3D model of that uh, uh, 18 millimeter lens at 20 meter standoff see 4.8 meters and 3.6 uh, meters high and then uh, uh, I added in a little uh, box at the other end there and I'll zoom in on that here in a second uh, there we go and uh, using that as to simulate the camera and also gives me a little handle to use when I'm placing the the image and, and trying to rotate it or, or, or change the azimuth etc. Right, I control C just like you do in any other application to copy that uh, image and I'm going to now paste it control V right into the uh, uh, image I have here into the uh, virtual layout and zoom in a little bit makes it easier to, to move the pieces around and to zoom in I'm going to create I'm going to attach the uh, the camera box so to speak to the mount eh, to play with it a little bit sometimes it, it's a little tricky trying to get it all lined up the way uh, I want to get it centered on the on the on the simulated mount there uh, as best I can but of course it when you're doing a little demonstration it never quite goes exactly to, uh, as you'd like it to 
uh, but now we do have it in place and now I'm going to zoom back out and we're going to take a look at it and we can see that okay this is the straight uh, zero degree tilt on the camera uh, with the camera up at approximately eight feet looking straight out and what we see there is that there is a significant gap between the lower edge of the field of view and the floor uh, which of course is not the way the, the the image should be placed right that's we would actually tilt the camera down and we'll, we will do that in a moment here but just to speak about this for a second you can see looking at the, uh, the image there that would be a representation of sort of what you would see on the monitor uh, uh, a better representation. I'm going to pan around now and then sort of zoom in and you can see the lower edge of the field of view there. That would be the bottom edge of the display uh, that you would see. And You would see that the subjects there, the people, uh, only occupy about the lower one-third uh, of the image, which is kind of wasteful on an image, right? So that's something that we don't want. Now we're going to uh, actually adjust the uh, uh, image, change the tilt on it. So I go ahead and select it and uh, hit my hotkey there to uh, uh, do a tilt. And hit my hotkey. And I attach it. And I come out, grab a line there, and you can see I just check in to make sure I can tilt the camera the, the way I want it and zoom back out and then I'm going to come over here and look and be able to see exactly how I want to place it uh, enable the tilting function again and as you can see I can I can move the uh, uh, the field of view uh, in the azimuth positive and negative uh, if you look down the corner there it says angle uh, the angle value is changing that's the tilt angle uh, what I'd like to go for is approximately five degrees so I can either run it till it says five or I could just enter the value five and it'll autom automatically snap to that number. Why five? Because then that gives me uh, only a remember I needed plus or minus 15 degrees pose so this is like a preload of like five degrees tilt. Each of the squares on the grid is about is 0.5 meters. So we can see that the young man there, the tallest gentleman, he's got uh, two squares about a meter above him. Uh, the other gentleman is about 1.5 meters above him. The young lady is, is several meters above her. And the young gentleman there, the young, uh, young boy, uh, has about five meters. He's only about halfway up through the, the field of view. Uh, so we, we can see that everybody's within the field of view as, as they should be. But more importantly, as we, we pan around to the side, we can get some more intelligence out of this. Uh, we can see that the uh, field of view intersects the, the plane of the ground at about five meters out. So we have definitely five meters worth of distance for the people to traverse before they exit the field of view. But if we look again, uh, uh, the young gentleman there, and we see where he might exit the field of view, and just tracing it on out, uh, right out there about the about the uh, the fifth, sixth, about the fifth uh, tile out is where he would probably, his face would be, leave the field of view because we're interested in the face and the facial recognition. And if I can go ahead and get a measurement on that in a second here, um, there you go, my tape, and measure it on out, and it is about uh, eight meters. This is important because, let's say, in our uh, facial recognition system, perhaps we need a minimum amount of time that the person uh, needs to be within the field of view for the system to process them. Well, with eight meters, that would give them approximately uh, four seconds uh, being within the field of view. By hitting the um, perspective key, I can also look at this and analyze it from above uh, and see that here's my field of view against the grid of the, uh, of the floor. Uh, again, measuring out and going out there at about uh, those five squares, uh, five tiles out, and seeing what the field of view width is. Uh, I can see it's about about three meters at that at that point. The field of view tapers down as you, you know it's a lens um, that tapers down as as you get closer to the uh, source. Uh, but looking again at that that same uh, five square out, seven point something meters, uh, nine point four meters out, a little bit farther. Uh, I can get, I can see distances. I can measure different things virtually. Well, what's this distance? What's that distance? If I decide that I want to see, well, maybe one lens is not enough. Maybe I want to stagger the lenses. I can just copy, paste in place, and grab the lens and move it over and decide on the appropriate amount of overlap that I want to have and see what the con ops, see what the performance might look like uh, with uh, two. Uh, cameras uh, covering the uh, the entrance there with some layer of overlap 
uh, between them. Uh, obviously, the uh, that that's a value that you'd have to work out, but one could very well see that uh, how the the system might hand off one subject to the one camera, one subject to the other camera. Uh, but again, this is something that uh, could be modeled and very easily seen uh, using uh, SketchUp. In our next example, I use the example of surveilling an outdoor mall parking. And with SketchUp, we'll show the integration with Google Earth, uh, exporting SketchUp shapes as georeference KMZ files. And in the same token, we can also import the, the KMZ waypoints as well. Here we have our blank um, SketchUp workspace. And up here we have a blue uh, eye, uh, white eye and a blue field icon, which brings up the model info eye area. And one of the selections there is for geolocation. If I click on geolocation and add location, what that does is it shows the integration uh, between SketchUp and uh, uh, Google Maps. Earlier, I, I'm from Florida, um, Orlando, Florida, so I typed in Florida Mall uh, up there in the uh, address field line. I just typed in Florida Mall, and it uh, zeroed in on the Florida Mall there for me and, and, and gave me a nice representation of the Florida Mall from Google Maps. Uh, I then select the region that I want to import into uh, SketchUp and drag that on out to extend it and just hit uh, click on grab and it automatically imports that selection into my uh, location. Uh, again go in there I only got half the mall at time so now when I get the other half the mall just uh, reposition the uh, uh, image select region again and open them up and then click on grab and boom it'll import and automatically seam it to the other selection. You can see this is USA, Orlando, Florida, and it gave me the longitude and latitude. And as I zoom in here, you can see there's no seams. It automatically aligns everything the way it's supposed to be. So let's position everything here the way we want it to be, and let's maybe focus in on uh, just this one area here, this one building. Uh, and then look over here at this other shape that I designed. Uh, here's a pole, six meter pole, with two PTZ enclosures at the top. Uh, control C, copy it, and then just Control V, paste it, just as we've done before, it directly into the uh, uh, workspace. And you can see the pole there, um, deciding where I want to put it. And let's actually, maybe the best place to put it is over here in this uh, uh, grassy area. Uh, what looks like a grassy area, you know, uh, that's, that's at the end of the uh, parking strip there. Uh, pos position in place there. And now I want to align the uh, uh, azimuth of the arm, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and grab it in a second there and align the uh, the arm so that they're facing north and south or I could make it east and west, whichever you prefer, but I can I can do that uh, uh, very easily there. Okay, uh, next I'm going to do is, uh, and I can see that I'm placed where I want it to be, then next what I'm going to do is come up here and uh, uh, show another lens I've created and the lens shape I've created over here and that's just a standard uh, one quarter inch CCD uh, lens for a PTZ camera uh, set to about eight millimeters uh, and looking out to about 75 meters right and if I do it'll have the field of view as shown about 33 meters uh, in the horizontal and about 45 meters in the uh, vertical. Uh, excuse me, 45 in the in the horizontal and 33 meters in the uh, vertical. Control C, copy, and then paste him directly into the uh, uh, workspace. There we go. I need to zoom out a little bit here and reposition the uh, component so that I have the uh, camera box uh, that I created uh, nearest to the uh, the pole, so I can grab him and drag, drag it down to uh, uh, attach it to the pole. So I zoom in again and do some fine positioning. May have to zoom in a little bit more, but the, Google's pr the, the sketch is pretty intelligent and automatically snap things if you have them in, in the right perspective. Hit my hotkey here uh, and I'll bring up my uh, rotation tool and now uh, attach it to the uh, lens uh, field of view and make sure I can rotate. Now I'm going to zoom on out and so I can see exactly where I want to position the lens. Uh, 
reposition everything here and then I can hit my key and rotate and put the lens looking out at the uh, parking area there uh, right down the front of the, uh, the building if I want if that might be one way to, to do it there uh, control V because it's still in the clipboard and position that uh, uh, lens there rotate them around grab the camera box and zoom in and do the same thing as I did before and attach it to the uh, PTZ enclosure at the top there. I have to zoom in a little bit. Sometimes they say you have to zoom in a little bit. Sometimes it gets a little tricky so you have to get in position just right and if you don't do, zoom in to the right level like I said, it'll, it'll automatically grab but of course when you're doing a demo you have to you don't always get it right. Okay I think I've got it this time. Grab him on there. He's, he's attached and then uh, attach to the lens, make sure I can rotate, and then zoom on out again. And then I can go ahead and position my lens the, however I uh, decide is the, is the proper way. So I want it looking out here and to this area of the parking lot, well, it's PTZ, and have it looking wherever I want. Uh, or maybe I want it as a default uh, looking down the side of the building there. But in any event, what we have when we're all done is a 3D representation of the two fields of view of the lenses um, and the, um, the camera pole, <coughs> the PTZ pole itself. Now, uh, to show the integration with Google Earth here, uh, there, there is a, uh, uh, a button up at the top here, and, and after I get it positioned here, uh, there's a, a button up here that looks like a little ball, a little green. Click on that, it says uh, show in Google Earth or preview in Google Earth what this looks at looks like. Those other lenses over there are ones I was uh, working on earlier, but it automatically exports those shapes uh, into Google Earth as KMZ files. So this is a Google Earth uh, display. Google Earth is free, uh, and uh, KMZs uh, is the uh, markup language for uh, Google Earth to show waypoints and different things. I directly exports those shapes there and you can see the fields of view you can see the camera pole and of course in Google Earth uh, you have a lot more resolution to see the uh, uh, parking lot images 3D model benefits okay so what do we see after capturing the conops we created a site model to use in the selection and definition of the required sensors it, it, was, it was helped us out a lot uh, we were able to place the models of the sensors within the virtual environment to test the conops and in, and the achievement of the mission goals. Were we seeing the people the way we needed to see uh, the proper fields of view? Uh, were people being seen, you know, throughout the uh, sufficient area uh, of travel? Uh, mentioned about eight meters, and if you're walking at two meters per second, that would give you about four seconds to the field of view. We're able to measure those things. We could rapidly test new conops to achieve requirements or suggest improvements. As you saw, I could just drop in another lens and we could overlap them to see if that's something that we might want to do to uh, uh, make things work more efficiently. We can try to develop and test potential product improvements. As we're working with the sensors in the virtual environment, uh, we might be able to identify shortfalls in sensor performance and say, hmm, if the sensor worked this way or that way, if there's some improvement here or there, uh, we can capture that information, test it, uh, and then pass all that information on to engineering to try and get products developed that just improve the product line, improve the performance overall, and of course customer satisfaction at that point. We've seen that it's a powerful tool to present proposals to customers and quickly gain acceptance. So that with the KMZ export uh, and just in general, it's 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 a visual visual aid to let people know what's happening. Lastly, uh, again, you can use this to create graphics uh, of use case scenarios for sales and marketing uh, because this presents the value proposition in a graphical form to the customer. If this presentation has been helpful or if I can be a further service, please email me at mstrong591 at gmail.com or please reach out to me on LinkedIn.